So I approach the patient and I'm looking for signs of danger. Are there any? The area is safe. Okay. And is the patient responsive? The patient is responsive and alert. Oh, okay. So, my name is Robert Cartwright Speetman. I'm one of the junior doctors here. Can I get your full name and how old you are, please? This is Keir Johnson, a 20-year-old gentleman. Okay. So I'd like to uh, assess the airway now. The airway is patent with no signs of airway compromise. Okay, so now we're going to move on to B. I'm looking at the respiratory effort. What is the respiratory effort? The patient is noted to have a deep and laboured breathing pattern. Okay, and on closer inspection of the chest, can I see anything? No. Okay. I'd like to check for signs of tracheal deviation. There's no signs of tracheal deviation. Okay. I'd like to percuss the chest as well. The chest is resonant. Okay. I would like to assess chest expansion. Chest expansion is normal. Okay. And I would like to auscultate the chest as well. There are no added sounds. Okay. At this point, I would like to get a respiratory rate and oxygen saturations for this patient. The respiratory rate is 33 and the oxygen saturations are 85% on room air. Okay, so I'd like to start 15 litres of oxygen through a non rebreathe mask at this point, so I'm going to put that on now. Okay, and is there any response to the treatment? The respiratory rate improves to 24, and the oxygen saturation improves to 94%. Okay, okay. So at this point in time, I would like to order an arterial blood gas and a chest x-ray for this patient. The arterial blood gas shows an arterial pH of 7.24, a PCO2 of 5.5, a bicarbonate of 12, and a glucose of 22.3. Okay, so I'm quite worried about this patient. They, they are quite acidotic, and as well as that, they've got quite a high glucose, so I'm going to continue with my assessment. So I'm going to move to C now, which is circulation. I'm having a look. Is there any signs of cardiac compromise in this patient? The patient appears pale and clammy. Okay. I would also like to check for a capillary refill time. The capillary refill time is greater than five seconds. Okay. I would like to assess for signs of peripheral edema as well. There's no peripheral edema, but you note dry mucous membranes and a reduced urine output. Okay. Okay. I would now like to palpate for the apex beat. And that's normal. Okay. And I'd like to auscultate the heart sounds. Heart sounds one and two are present with no added sounds. Okay. At this point in time, I would like to get a heart rate and a blood pressure for this patient. The heart rate is 125 and the blood pressure is 104 over 67. Okay, so I'd like to establish IV access now, so I'm going to insert two wide bore cannula. Okay, so now at this point, I would like to take some bloods from this patient. I'd like to take a full blood count, urea and electrolytes, liver function tests, a venous blood gas, C-reactive protein and another blood glucose. The serum glucose is still 22.3. At this point in time, I would like to order an ECG as well for this patient. The ECG shows sinus tachycardia. Okay. So now I would like to consider catheterizing this patient. I would also like to prescribe a fluid challenge of 500 milliliters of normal saline over 15 minutes. And after that, I would like to set up a one liter bag of normal saline to run over an hour. Now I'm going to move on to D for disability. Okay. So I'd like to check if the patient is alert. The patient is alert. Okay. I would also like to check the patient's pupils. The, pa the pupils are equal and reactive to light. Okay. I'd also like to get the patient's temperature at this point. The temperature is 37.2 degrees Celsius. Okay. And I would like to take another blood, glu blood glucose reading here. The blood glucose is still 22.3. Okay. So now I'm going to move on to E for exposure. So I'm going to expose the patient now. Is there anything that I can see on this patient? There's no further findings from inspection. Okay. I'd like to palpate the abdomen. You elicit some tenderness in the epigastric region. Okay. And I would like to percuss the abdomen. Uh, there's no further findings on examination. Okay. Okay. And at this point, I would like to dip the urine for ketones. And they are positive for ketones. Okay. Is there a blood ketone reading as well? Yes. And they are high. Okay. Okay. So this patient has, um, is, they're profoundly acidotic, they've got a very high blood glucose and they've also got ketones in the urine and in the blood and these are raised. I'm quite worried about this being diabetic ketoacidosis. So what I would like to do is I'd like to set up uh, a fixed rate infusion of insulin to run alongside some glucose. I'd consider cardiac monitoring as well. 
I'd like to get closer monitoring of this patient, uh, specifically looking at urea and electrolytes as well, and I'd like to inform my medical registrar about this patient. Hello, my name's Robert Cartwright Speakman, one of the doctors in A&E. Can I check who I'm speaking to, please? Oh, the med reg, great, great. So I've got a patient here that I'm worried about. I'm thinking that he might be in diabetic ketoacidosis. His name's Kia Johnson, he's a 20-year-old male. His hospital number's 123456, and he's in bed six down here. He was admitted today with a one-day history of abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting, alongside polyuria, polydipsia, and drowsiness, and he has a background history of type 1 diabetes. So I've examined him and his airway is patent. He has deep laboured breathing and is tachypneic and hypoxic with a respiratory rate of 33 and oxygen saturations of 85% on room on admission. Since then I've prescribed 15 litres of oxygen through a non-rebreathed mask and his saturations have come up to 94. I've also taken an arterial blood gas. The pH is 7.24, the PCO2 is 5.5, bicarbonate is 12, and the glucose is 22.3. He's also tachycardic and hypertensive with a heart rate of 125 and a blood pressure of 104 over 67. So I've inserted two wide bore cannulas and I've given him a fluid challenge with normal saline. And once this is finished, I will continue IV fluids with one litre of normal saline over an hour. I've also taken a full blood count, urea and electrolytes, venous blood gas, blood ketones, C-reactive protein, liver function tests, and serum glucose. The blood ketones are raised, and I've also dipped his urine for ketones, and these are raised as well. He's apyrexial and alert, and no other abnormalities were found on full exposure. I believe this gentleman has a diagnosis of diabetic ketoacidosis due to the high blood glucose, acidosis, and ketosis on a background of type 1 diabetes. So I'll prescribe a fixed rate IV insulin infusion with a glucose infusion to run alongside it. I'll also continue close monitoring, begin cardiac monitoring, and regularly measure his urea and electrolytes. Could you please come and see this patient as soon as you can? Is there anything else you'd like me to do before you come? Thank you.